welcome to the Cal Poly Arboretum. This is a resource for those of you that are on campus to come and learn about plants. Um, here we have this beautiful meadow opening um, and I'm going to go through some of the species that you see here and why they're good for California gardens. This flower is one of the first species that I le learned as a child from my, from my grandfather, whose name was Poppy, was his nickname that I used. So the California Poppy, um, these are what the buds look like. Sometimes you'll see that a separation forms here and you can actually pull the buds off, but picking California Poppies is illegal. But look at this really soft, beautiful um, divided foliage, gray green, and bright burnt orange flowers. And there's a field of poppies behind us here. This is the California state flower. So as a landscape architect or a horticulturist, you better know it. Here is another hybrid iris. These species are excellent in understory of oaks or other tree species and shaded corners of your yard where you have a little bit more moisture. Um, this species we saw last week on the Coon Creek Trail, this is Western Sword Fern. So it has these prominent fronds. Um, it is in the dry Opteridaceae family, the wood fern family. Um, and these big bunches of grasses here are um, Carex uh, tumulicosa, foothill sedge. Um, you can see what the flowers look like on them. They're pretty inconspicuous flowers, which are characteristic of plants in the Cyperaceae family. Most Carexes have these kind of little brown cream colored seeds um, and um, bunch grass habit like this. You'll find them in sites with higher moisture but also in like grasslands and like mis mixed plant communities. <clears throat> Here we have Lamus condensatus or um, Canyon Prince wild rye. Rye grasses are in the Poaceae family. Poaceae encompasses all grass species on earth. Um, grasses um, tend to um, have this structure where they have these leaves that surround a calm, calm here. And then this is the auricle, is where the leaf clasps the stem. So the characteristics here help you diagnose the grass if you don't have any flowers on it. Um, you can see there's some white um, powder on the top of this grass. But if we back up, you'll see just the beautiful structure of this rye grass. Um, Rye grasses are related to Elemis grasses, and grasses have unique families or tribes within them. There's so much diversity of grass species that, you know, there's like 20 different tribes of grasses. And within those, they'll have common characteristics. Um, but you can see some of the beautiful purple colors, blues and greens on the foliage of this Elemis grass. This grass does occur throughout San Luis Obispo County and beyond. Yeah. Festuca idahoensis um, is another um, bunch grass that is common in the landscaping trade. Um, this species does excellent in rock gardens, in a full sun or partial shade. And um, it has more of a blue-green hue than most of the other grasses that are commercially available.
Here we have Mullenbergia rigans or deer grass. This species is two to three and a half feet tall and it has plumes that sway in the breeze. Um, it's a perennial drought tolerant grass that's very low maintenance and likes full sun. Um, this bunch grass, you'll want to cut it back um, close to the ground, maybe six inches um, annually and let it re-sprout um, from its root mass. And you can see here that it's um, kind of a little bit overgrown in the front, but you can see the bunches in the back. Sometimes um, once this is cut back, it has much more of an architectural form to it. Here we have Aquilegia formosa or columbine. This has very striking red and yellow flowers in the summertime. It grows along creek sides and under forest um, understory, and it's in the Ranunculaceae or the buttercup family. If you look, the um, stems have a purplish color to them, um, and the leaves are very, very soft. Um, and have these um, three part, three leaflets. Here we have Fragaria vesca. This is woodland strawberry. The leaflets are a little bit smaller than the Fragaria, and they also um, have more hairs and are a darker green color. Um, depending on the habitat. This species is a really great ground cover um, if you've got a rock garden um, or if you need something to grow under tree understory. <clears throat> Here we have heuchera or coral bells in the Saxifragaceae. This has palmate leaflets that have a crenate margin and um, really pretty um, inflorescences. Um, the native Heuchera maxima or Micrantha have white flowers, but this is a hybridized version that has pink flowers. You can get pink, red, even varieties with red or purple foliage are available. This species does really well in the shade, which is often find a har hard to find something that does well in full shade. Um, so if you've got a shaded site under tree species, it also does well with low water. So um, it doesn't have to be um, a highly irrigated uh, landscape. For and why it is to it caged? Well. It is caged because uh, to prevent deer browsing here. I guess it's just gotten mowed away by the, the local Kalapali deer. Just like that. All right, the next species we're going to talk about is um, Douglas iris, Iris Douglasiana. Um, this is a bulb. It emerges from these glossy green um, leaves and um, it has these beautiful striking yellow marks along the petals and just a really pretty petal arrangement there. Within this garden, um, there is some varieties, hybrids of this Iris Douglasiana. Um, this one is called Canyon, Canyon Snow. Snow Iris. Here we have a small shrub that is in the mallow family. You can see um, how it has a compound, um, uh, many part uh, stamen here and um, five petals. And on the back, the bracts are split into a star of five. 
really hairy tome and toast foliage. Mallows don't always have that. This is in the Malvaceae family. I'm not sure exactly which species of mallow it is, but we can put it on your species list for the week. Um, and it has these um, kind of um, almost palmate leaves. Soft. Soft leaves and um, purplish um, brown stems. And then back behind me here is a beautiful grove of Encelia californica which is our native, one of our native sunflowers. And we're just gonna go ahead and walk through here and look at the plants along the way. The sunflower is in the Asteraceae family. Asters have um, uh, flowers that are very unique in that every single one of these unique parts is a flower. So this ray here, um, is a can have reproductive parts associated with it and then these disc flowers in the center also will have reproductive parts um, asters have alternate uh, leaves and so they opposite locations on they um, they alternate locations on the stem on either side um, asters also create seed that's very um, resistant to climate change in that the seed has different morphological characteristics, different sizes within the same flower. Um, and Asteraceae is one of the most diverse plant families on earth next to grasses. Here we have um, Dudleya virens species Hassii, Catalina Island Dudleya. So it's still your succulent, um, but it really looks like it kind of um, reproduces clonally and sprouts um, from uh, clonal um, division. It's in the Crassulaceae family. Um, and down here we have a beautiful um, Salvia appiana or white sage. This species um, has a lot of meaning to California Native Americans because it was used um, as a um, herbal remedy, also used in incense for ceremonies. And here you can begin to see what the flowers look like. These beautiful, delicate white flowers with protruding um, stamen and they're bilabiate. Um, you can split them down the middle and they'll have equal characteristics on both sides, just like your face. And then this is um, in the Lamiaceae family. It's got a square stem to it. So if you've got something that's highly scented with a square stem, it is often going to be, here we have Dudleya, Pulverulenta or chalk Dudleya. You can rub this chalk off of the succulent leaves. Um, we saw a related species at Coon Creek last week. This is drought tolerant, excellent in rock uh, faces and rock outcroppings, and excellent in full sun or south facing sites. It's in the live forever, um, is the other common name. Here we have um, uh, uh, Berberis aquifolium compacta. It's also known as Oregon grape. This species um, has little tiny yellow flowers in these clusters that and it makes these berries off of that you can make jam. And so it's considered uh, like a mini grape in Oregon and they'll harvest them and make, make jam. Um, this is a ground cover that's really common in urban sites and along parking lots. It can be a deterrent to pedestrian crossings just because of how thick it is. Um, and um, the leaflets um, are serrated with little um, thorns. Um, it's a ground cover that um, spreads underground with rhizomes.
here we have next to the Berberis Salvia spathacea. You can understand the spathacea name just because of the spatulate shaped leaflets. These are very um, glandular and underside is white tomentose. Um, and so um, these leaflets will surround the stem. It is also a ground cover common under oaks. Um, and um, you can see how the flowers here kind of form these heads that um, occur rising along the, the, um, the rachis. Um, Salvia spathacea is a real attractor for birds and butterflies, and that's one reason to put it into your garden. Here we have Symphorocarpus albus, um, variety lavagatus, also known as snowberry. So in the late summer, you will see um, these little uh, a third quarter inch round um, white berries. And this is common along trails, um, under oak understory, and other woodlands. Um, it's in the Caprifoliaceae, or the honeysuckle family. So if you look at kind of just the color and the, um, the characteristics of the leaflets, it's very com um, similar to Lanicera, or honeysuckle species. So right next to me here, this tree is um, California buckeye, Aeschylus californicus. It has five to seven leaflets like this. It also has a really striking um, silver bark. It will lose its leaves in the fall in September, late September, and it's drought deciduous over the winter in order to conserve water. Um, its leaves emerge in March with the late winter rains. And it has striking plumes of these creamy white flowers that kind of emerge off of the stems. It's endemic to California. Um, it occurs throughout the state. And its height is from 12 feet to 30 feet. Um, one thing to keep in mind if you are putting this like in a family's yard, the fruit is toxic, so they will need to harvest the fruit off of this, or if they have a dog that's going to start gnawing on it, um, you want to think about that. Um, but this is a beautiful, striking, um, sculptural tree. Um, this one is quite large. Um, they don't always branch so much from the base. Here we have Lionothamnus floribundus, Santa Cruz ironwood. It has very unique um, leaves. See how those are divided, serrated all the way to, um, to the, midrib. The, the midrib. And it's got red stems, and then it, it bleeds into this really kind of beautiful crackled bark. Um, you can see the bark on the trunk itself with the gray kind of beautifulness on top of the um, maroon coloring. This species is good for like an urban landscape and it has um, beautiful white flowers, hence the Floribundus name. So check it out. And back behind us here we have um, wax myrtle. Morella californica. This is a pretty flexible um, large shrub, small tree that is a good foundation species. So if you're looking for something um, to be a screen um, along the edge of a yard or um, to uh, kind of filter the sunlight, this is a good species. It occurs all the way up to Washington. Here we have Quercus pacifica, Channel Island scrub oak. So you can see when you look at the leaf 
leaves here that it does have leaves similar to the oak species um, but look at the drooping um, flowers forming on this it's just gorgeous right now so the fact that it has Channel Island in the common name means it's native to the Channel Island habitat and um, that's where it occurs in California so you're gonna want to put it in gardens in Santa Barbara area here we have Quercus tomatella island oak it's in the Fagaceae or the oak family and what is cool about this species is it's not just a hardy oak um, it is also a rare plant species um, it has glossy deep green leaves it's good in coastal gardens with coast live oak leaves are five to eight centimeters in length oblong to obovate with a toothed margin and this is also considered a rare species in California. It only occurs um, in the Channel Islands and on the Guadalupe Islands off the coast of Baja, California. It's ranked as CNPS 4.2, um, which is the lowest priority ranking for California Native Plant Society. And it, its size is usually about 30 by 30 feet. Um, wide and tall. Okay, I got you going. Here behind me, this big tree is called Rus ovata. Um, I think the common name is sugar bush um, because of the sweet scent of the flowers and the foliage. I can only smell celery at Apiana right now. Um, <laughs> And if you look at the flowers close up, you'll see they have five stamen, five petals, and a little bit of a tube forming down below. Um, and it has these um, rounded, ovate leaves um, and kind of this purplish gray stem to it. Um, this is a very hardy, drought-tolerant species. Um, if you're looking for something next to a, a driveway in full sun, um, if you're looking for a screen tree species, um, this has multiple applications. Um, Here we have Sequoia sempervirens. This is um, coast uh, redwood. This variety specifically is Filoli redwood, so you see that its um, foliage is much more of a gray blue color. Um, sequoias are really characteristic species of this state. Um, they're native from Big Sur to Oregon. They live up to 2,200 years and they're the tallest tree on earth at 380 feet in height. The diameter breast height can be up to 26 feet across if you measure the circumference of the tree. Um, they occur in habitats with wet winters and foggy summers. So if you think of North Coastal California, Big Sur, where these pockets of um, moisture are um, in these um, coastal habitats. This species is very sensitive to water quality and air quality issues. So in that sense, when you start to see it dying back, you know that we have some um, environmental problems of concern. Um, it's low maintenance, it occurs from sun to partial shade, and it's the only living species in the genus Sequoia in the Cupressaceae um, family. So this is just a gorgeous tree to learn more about. If you've ever been to the Mariposa Grove in Yosemite, that's a wonderful place to experience sequoias. A mint. So I think that wraps us up for this week.
um, we will send a plant list to you and we want you to um, learn Calscape. So get in there.